Shares of biotech spark therapeutics down 35% today after the company presented preliminary data on its hemophilia treatment. Our Meg Terrell is live at the American Society of Hematilo uh, Hematology Conference in Atlanta. She joins us now exclusively with Spark CEO Jeff Marazzo. Meg? Kelly, thank you so much. And Jeff, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. So to make clear what you guys are working on, your stock ticker is once, O-N-C-E, meaning you're aiming to deliver these therapies just once to fix the underlying genetic problem going on in these diseases like hemophilia. Of course, investors reacting negatively to your update in hemophilia today. Tell us about that reaction. Do you think they're looking at the data in the wrong way? Well, I think what I'd just say is that they are obviously still trying to digest the data that we presented today. You know, taking a step back, I think what's important, what we presented on today was actually results in both our program in hemophilia B as well as results in a program in hemophilia A, where we've actually, over across both of them, infused 18 participants across our hemophilia A and hemophilia B trials. Um, and what we've seen so far is really, I think, incredibly exciting um, and encouraging. Uh, in both hemophilia B, where we have 11 of those participants out um, uh, close to a year with 13 years of follow-up data, we've seen reductions in their bleed rates by nearly 100%, as well as reductions near elimination of the infusion rates that they have to take. And we've seen similar reductions near elimination in our hemophilia A program, albeit early, with only four participants so far. Um, and in our hemophilia A program, which is something that I think investors are more focused on today, um, we, are, we continue to be extremely excited about not only the potency of the product we've seen, uh, we know we have some more optimization to do in terms of our dose finding and dose escalation work, but we're incredibly confident and excited about not only our technology, our product candidate, uh, but also our team to be able to solve that as we've done in the past. Well, in hemophilia A, of course, being the more common form of the disease, mm -hmm. Biomarin has some data here that people seem very excited about. I mean, how do you look at the competitive landscape? Is it a zero-sum game for whichever gene therapy gets to the market first? Yeah, so we certainly don't think so. Uh, I think the data they, they shared over the weekend and published is incredibly encouraging. And I think anytime you get data where uh, you get a potential new solution for patients who I think there's still a great unmet medical need for patients with hemophilia, I think that's a great day. Uh, we believe that uh, our early results, albeit early, uh, are also showing incredibly encouraging signs. We've seen a 100% reduction in the annualized bleeding rate in patients in our hemophilia trial, albeit early. Um, and we've seen that, uh, that even at very low doses, our vector is incredibly potent um, and believe we have room to dose escalate from there. We need to do more work to dose escalate and optimize that product. We're incredibly excited about it and like to be a part of uh, the market uh, providing a solution to these patients. Again, keep in mind, these are patients that today uh, have to take infusions on a regular basis chronically for the rest of their life. And I think gene therapy has tremendous potential to potentially give a patient a single dose and not only eliminate those excessive bleeds that they suffer from, but also eliminate the need for those chronic infusions. That's an incredibly exciting moment for patients. Well, another uh, program that you have going on isn't in the hematology space, but it is close to potentially getting FDA approval. Um, that's a gene therapy for a rare retinal disease that leads to blindness. Um, as that approaches the market, you could be a trendsetter in price here, the first gene therapy, one-time treatment uh, in the U.S. How are you thinking about pricing that? Well, so we will set a price after we're approved, and so we're not quite there yet. Our Budu for Action uh, is scheduled for January 12th, so we're obviously within a month of that and ex incredibly excited uh, and optimistic about the, the potential for that approval to come. Um, and then we are certainly spending a lot of time, as we've talked in the past, about what we think the value um, of, uh, of gaining back functional vision in patients are. Uh, we think our society already places a substantial value on sight, actually in the way that we actually compensate people who lose sight under long-term disability policies or even court cases where people have lost sight. And we've done some of our own economic analysis internally, looking at the functional vision improvements we've seen in our patients and believe that when you make reasonable assumptions, you can get to a value of a therapy, which is one time potentially lasts lifelong potentially in these patients, you can get to a value of therapy in excess of a million dollars. Uh, and we believe that, that we can price then uh, responsibly next to that uh, value that's created um, and, and provide benefit uh, and access importantly for patients um, as well as benefits for our employees and shareholders. Well, there's a lot to think about there. We heard the million dollar potential uh, framework, so we'll keep that in mind. Jeff, mm -hmm. thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, Appreciate Kelly it. and Scott, back over to you guys. All right, Meg, thank you so much. Coming up in March, by the way, CNBC is hosting its inaugural Healthy Returns Conference. It's a special event featuring top CEOs, newsmakers, investors, and entrepreneurs about the business of healthcare. For more information and tickets, go to cnbc.com slash healthy returns. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.